Good morning, my students. My course is GST 111, that is Communication in English 1. And my topic is Mechanics of Writing. The term mechanics can be just said to be the kind of a method of constructing a piece of written work. It entails the art of writing or the science of putting words together, resulting to appropriateness of meaning out of the piece. This said mechanics of writing subsume the following themes. One, we have punctuation marks, we have spellings, and we have capitalization, respectively. This means that graphic markers, the spelling differences, the capitalization techniques we see are not supposed to be regarded as mere decorations when we are writing. They are not actually meant to beautify our writing for aesthetic beauty, but rather they influence the writer intended meaning in the writing. In writing, however, Correct pronunciations, spellings, and capitalization are primarily essential to effective communication of a writer's ideas. Therefore, misuse or carelessness in the use of the said mechanics of writing badly affects the meaning of the written work. And this is why we say you may end up writing one thing, but your readership would understand another thing. It means the meaning is going to be zigzagging because you are badly punctuating the writing and the readership is understanding it in a different way. Okay, now, punctuation marks that I said, capitalization and spellings are very important for us to have clarity of papers in their use and for you to harness what you are targeting in achieving your meaning for instance now if you are punctuating this way for instance a writer would want to say released comma not to be executed and the other writer for instance is writing released not comma not to be executed the same words in these two sentences the only difference we see is in the use of comma the first one is using comma after released while the second one is using comma after not it means the shift of this comma is making differences of meaning in these two sentences that have the same word identical word the first one is in released comma not to be executed it means that the person in question that the sentence addresses is supposed to be released okay supposed to be exonerated not to be killed but the other one is saying released not to be executed it means that in this sentence the victim is supposed to be what killed is supposed to be executed it is saying that released not that do not release the person so you see one leg is in paradise and the other one is in hellfire because of misuse of the comma as one of the punctuation marks we have for capitalization too for instance when you have abu capitalized it stands for amadu Bello university but if you capitalize only A, the B and the U in small letter, it is a shortened form of the word Abu Bakr, which is a name. Even the pronunciations are different. The first one is ABU and this one is Abu, the clipped form of Abu Bakr. Because of the capitalization of just the initial letter A. But if somebody does not capitalize anything, the A, the B, the U are in small letters. It, it's not Ahmadu Bello University again. It is not Abu as a shortened form of Abu Bakr. But what? Abu. Even the pronunciation is different. That one is ABU. The other one is Abu. And this one is Abu. Abu in house language, for instance, means anything. So you see, if you capitalize badly, it affects your intended meaning in the piece of your writing. 
For spelling, there are words we call homophonous words, for instance. They are words that are pronounced in the same way, but have different origins, different spellings, and different semantics or meaning. It means if you want to write, write as in R I G H T. Okay, you say write, and somebody is writing W R I T E. Another person is writing R I T E, and another person is writing W R I G H T. It means there are going to be four different meanings altogether because of what spelling problem so these are called mechanics of writing because they fix our writings to make appropriate functioning of our targeted meaning and for our readership to understand what we mean okay now we take them one after the other and talk about them for instance now starting with the punctuation marks punctuation marks okay have nothing to do with you when you are engaged in the art of speaking but when you are engaged in the art of writing they must be in function and this is why we call them mechanics of writing not mechanics of what speaking and you have to judiciously use them for you to have a kind of or for your readership to have a kind of a comprehension and deduction of your intended meaning and these punctuation marks are used in our writings for a particular reason and to determine our own target out of the piece of the work okay punctuation marks are just symbols or signs we use in the course of writing which are not meant for beautify in the writing but are meant for clarity of purpose in the word function of our piece of writing and based on this they have operational functions and they are different in terms of uses and this is why we have to take them one after the other we have types of punctuation marks there are two basically types of what punctuation marks we have one terminal or end punctuation marks and we have medial punctuation marks the first one terminal or end it is said to be terminal or end because the they are punctuation marks that are car or are used at the end of our sentence or expressions it means they do not occur in between words within our sentential stretch this is why we call them terminal punctuation marks and the other ones we call medial punctuation marks you cannot use them to end your sentence or expression but they are used in between words or at the media of what our writing so it means whatever is terminal it has to do with what a position we see a terminal position or the end position okay let's now look at what are the punctuation marks that are terminal and what are the punctuation marks that are medial? Terminal punctuation marks, for instance, are as follows. One, we have what we call the full stop. Two, we have the question mark. And three, we have what? We have the exclamation mark. Starting with the first one, full stop. Another name for full stop is period. And it is just a dot like this it is used in the following ways one to mark completion or end of a declarative sentence declarative sentence is a sentence that does not give command like imperative sentence it does not ask a question like interrogative sentence and it does not show emotions or gravity of emotional effect for it to be called what exclamatory sentence Declarative sentence, as the name uh, uh, as the name refers, it just declares. It states fact or otherwise about something. For example, they spent the money. This is not asking a question. This is not giving command, and it is not showing emotion. You're just giving a declaration that they spent the money. Full stop. She was asked to marry him. Full stop. The boy slapped his girlfriend full stop this is one of the uses of full stop second use it is used for standard abbreviations for instance usa has dot in between ba bachelor of art dot ma master of arts and the rest 
Um, the second term now punctuation mark is the question mark. Question mark is primarily used as one of the principal punctuation marks we have in the end of a sentence that is called a direct question. Okay, there are sentences that are having a kind of elementary things in them asking a question which requires what an answer so in this we say question mark is used at the end of a direct question or at the end of what we call interrogative sentence interrogative sentence is that as the name implies is a sentence that asks a question okay it asks a question so anytime a sentence asks a question it carries what a question mark at the end okay for instance, we have, are you single? Question mark. It is a question. Will you marry me? Is a question. And the rest. Okay. Another or the third of the terminal punctuation marks, I said we have three. The third one now is exclamation mark. It is just an I upside down. Okay. Something like this and a dot below or under. It is used as one of the principal punctuation marks in English at the end of an exclamatory sentence or interjections expressing sudden emotions as indicated in the speech by a rise in the pitch of the voice. It occurs at the end of a word or phrase or a sentence called out of a strong feeling of a kind. So it means you don't use it at the end of a sentence that asks a question or at the end of a sentence that just declares this one is used when the sentence is showing what gravity of emotional effect like love hatred anger sorrow anxiety and the rest example what a beauty what a beauty exclamation mark get lost exclamation mark oh this is delicious exclamation mark here, you can put the exclamation mark after O, and you can as well put it after what? What? Or oh, this is delicious. Okay? It depends on how you say it. Oh! Exclamation mark. This is delicious! Exclamation mark. One is exclamatory uh, sentence, and the other one is exclamatory word. But if somebody says it in the same pitch, Oh, what a beauty without stoppage! It carries only one exclamation mark. No matter how it is, it shows emotion. That is the use. Medial punctuation marks. Now, as I've already explained, they occur not at the end, unlike the terminal punctuation marks. And we have the following. In fact, apart from these three, we say terminal. Any other one is media. The first one is comma. This is used to mark a shortest pause. For instance, it is used to mark a shortest form and again it is used to separate words of the same part of speech in the same sentence example i saw musty comma saddam comma samuel and zaid you see they are all names of people and you're using comma to create a kind of a shortest pause we wrote comma read comma examined and criticized the paper you see comma is used in between they belong to the same class of words or parts of speech saddam is handsome comma intelligent comma rich and acidus it is used to separate words another use of the comma is it is used to mark off phrases in opposition for instance muhammad buhari comma the president comma is silent you are separating two phrases in what? In an oppositional uh, function. It is also used to like for a coordinating conjunction, joining independent clauses. Okay. For instance, now when you say we were on our way, comma when she set the house on fire. One is independent and the other one is what dependent. So it is used. To join these two um, clauses together, especially when you use um, a kind of the dependent clause at the beginning. When she set the house on fire, comma, we were on our way. So this is how we use the 
comma. The next one is colon. Colon is used in a more, in fact, the colon marks a more complete post than the semicolon. Though we've not reached semicolon yet, but colon is used to mark a kind of a more complete post. For instance, it is used to introduce a quotation. Example, today Saddam says, colon, do not run away from challenges. You're using colon to introduce a kind of an expression being made by someone. It is also used to introduce a list of items. For instance, the courses I like are colon, phonology, morphology, computer science, geography, physics, and the rest. This is another function of the colon. It is also used to introduce an explanation or a statement or even a proposition. Example, the purpose for my readiness is this. Colon, I dislike unnecessary argument. You see, you are introducing, you usually need to introduce a kind of an explanation to something you have mentioned. The next one is semicolon. This is used to mark a longer pause okay a longer post than a comma it is used between independent clauses not joined by coordinating con conjunction okay for instance we got married semicolon we were madly in love full stop you see because you are writing you can avoid the use of what we call conjunctions conjunctions are basically meant to join separate parts together for instance, if you are speaking, you, you cannot avoid the use of conjunctions. But if you're writing, you can do that. For instance, ordinarily, you can say, we got married, semicolon, when you are speaking. We were madly in love. This is only occurring in terms of writing. You're supposed to say, we got married because we were madly in love in the art of speaking. But this one is writing. This is why we call them mechanics of what? Writing. You can avoid conjunction because and replace it with what semicolon so the sentence would be in the writing form or in the written form rather we got married semicolon we were madly in love because it's removed and replaced with the semicolon it is also used to separate sentences which are connected closely in thought for instance as she loves me comma i weep for her semicolon as she was fortunate comma i rejoice rejoice at it you see you are using semicolon to connect sentences that are closely related in thought the next one is quotation marks and another name for quotation marks uh is um inverted commas something like this or it can just be one one like this whichever if, if, either of the two when you use it you are simply correct it is used to indicate a direct speech direct speech when you are writing and you are using an expression that is not from you but from somebody and you are picking it directly to put it the way it was spoken by the speaker who is original of it you have to put it in quotation mark you are quoting then put it in quotation mark example obeyed said you open okay the first one now if you do not live for anything die for something you close it means this expression is not for you as a writer but it's for someone called uber it and your cottage therefore you have to put it in quotation mark okay another example for instance will you marry me in quotation mark the man asked me you see you are quoting what the man said if not it would have been the man asked me if i would marry him you see you're just like giving an indirect speech but this one is direct then you have to put it in quotation mark it is used also to enclose strange or foreign words words that are unfamiliar in the language you are using to write for instance the indian man called me by you are using english okay and you are saying by by b h a i is not an english word then you have to put it in in quotation mark because it is a strange word okay hardly you find no gary in student room that gary is supposed to be put in inverted comma 
because it is non-English word. It doesn't belong to the bank of words in English or the vocabulary of English language. This is also part of its use. It is also used to enclose titles of poems, articles, or short stories. For instance, Obey the last season of propaganda. Season of propaganda is the title of a poetry. Then you have to put it in quotation mark. The next media punctuation mark is apostrophe. It's a, a kind of a stroke like this. It is used in the following ways. One, to indicate ownership or position. Dr. Tenimus office, for instance. Tenimus has apostrophe before the S. Mustis book on semantics. Mustis apostrophe before the S. And the rest um but there is one very important thing here you see um sometimes you see apostrophe before the s and sometimes you see it after the s when it is before the s it means the writer has one thing or one person on their mind for instance mustis you see it is just referring to one person but if you use it for instance the student handbook student the s is coming after the apostrophe it means you have one student at heart but if you are using the apostrophe after the s it means you have more than one student at heart so you have to be very careful in the use of it before or after the s another thing is to show position for instance sometimes a name originally has s in it inherent example james james s is there then when you are wanting to say something belongs to James, you cannot say James's book when you're writing. You, you cannot put S after apostrophe again. No. In the pronunciation, you have to account for it. James's book. But when writing, the apostrophe only comes after the S in the name and you don't put another S. You have to be very careful sometimes again the letter ending a name may not have this pronunciation or, or i mean may not have this s as a one of its letters forming the word of the name it is in terms of pronunciation that you account for the s sound for instance joyce joyce is spelled j o y c e Okay, C E, yes, Joy C E. It means the sound is S and it is there, but the letter is not S. There is a rule here. After the E, you have to put the apostrophe and add S because the name does not have a letter S at the end, but only the sound. Then you have to put the S after the apostrophe but for james already is having s then you only put the apostrophe without addition of any s but the pronunciations are the same james's book and joyce's book or joyce's room and the rest um it is also used to to indicate a kind of contraction of words contraction when you are like deleting some parts of letters when you are speaking for instance Instead of you to say, I will come, you can say, I'll come. A, sorry, I, apostrophe, LL. Instead of you to say, I will, you can say, I'll. Apostrophe is used. We call them contracted forms. Instead of you to say, are you not attending? You can say, ain't you attending? The end is A-R-E-N, apostrophe, T. It means you are contracting, are you not? For what? Ain't you. Therefore, apostrophe is also used. This is also very important when we, we are using the apostrophe. The next one is caret. Caret is mostly used when you are not even typing, but you are using your hand to, to write. It is something like this. A small V, but upside down. Okay, something like this. It is used when there is a kind of a non-deliberate omission of letters words or expressions when writing to bring back this missing items into the expression this punctuation mark is used for instance i want to say i punished her with to ascertain something i punish her with to ascertain something 
you see something is missing then if you are writing you have to indicate apostrophe then you put what is missing instead of saying i punish her with to ascertain something you can put the the carrot and indicate i punished her with my love my love should be indicated uh, after the use of the word carrot it means the reader would understand that something is missing which is non-deliberate and you have brought it back with the use of the carrot this is its major use the next one is ellipsis ellipsis is used when you want to deliberately delete or omit something that you may think it doesn't sound well or normal it's not actually um good to be heard by or good to be seen or read by readership then you can use the ellipsis to omit it it shows you deliberately do that it has three dots it is used usually a kind of um uh, to omit i said let's see an example for instance i closed my eyes when a friend's wife entered his sitting room unknowing of my presence she was half dot 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 so she screamed and ran dot 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 leaving my hands akimbo and my friends mm, my friend's mouth again you see you continue you have removed something you say she was half dot 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 it means you are omitting something you don't want to say so that is the essence of using the ellipsis to omit something deliberately but one thing you should know is sometimes you see four dots yes three dots still remain for ellipsis the last one is period or full stop it's just used when you don't want to mention anything you are ending the expression there this is why you use four but some people using 5 10 20 we don't even know where they are coming from very very unfortunate they don't even know the rules of using them it's not part of it okay now the next one is hyphen hyphen is used okay to join compound words together or to form compound words or link two words together example student teacher relationship hyphen is used between the student and the teacher it is also used to divide a word into two at line endings if you're writing with your hand and the space cannot accommodate writing of a particular word you can break the words into two with the use of hyphen for instance you want to write communication then you can write communicate hyphen then you come to the next line and put shin and one thing is there is rule here you don't break words anyhow like communicate cannot you cannot break break it commute then negation no it's not like that we have what we call independent morphemes and dependent morphemes this way you have to separate the two shin is attached to communicate fatherless for instance father is the word less is attached so you break father and less you cannot say fa a hyphen the less no it doesn't sound normal as a good writer the next one is bracket another name for bracket is parenthesis it is something like this this is used to enclose an information okay which can either be a word a phrase or a sentence considered to be purely supplementary or explanatory in nature and could not be removed without changing anything it means even if you enclose the information or you don't put it completely it doesn't affect the expression but you enclose simply to say it is supplementary as it explains what you have mentioned before for instance the lecturer open bracket the one i talked to you about close bracket is amiable you see you can say the lecturer is amiable but you are putting the one i talked to you about in bracket it means you are using it as an information that is supplementary which accounts more on who the lecturer is it amplifies what you have mentioned that is the lecturer okay okay now the next one is dash dash is used in the following ways it is a longer version of what we call hyphen longer version of what hyphen it is used to introduce a short break in the continuity of a sentence for instance she has never been in trouble at school dash quite the reverse see you are introducing something for continuity purpose it is also used to introduce a statement that amplifies or explains what has been said 
For instance, the burglars took everything of value. Dash, the jewelry, comma, TV set, and money. You see, you are introducing a kind of a statement that talks more of what the burglars have done or have taken. That's it for um, this particular punctuation we call dash. The next one is slash. Slash is something like this. This is used in the following ways. One, to separate options or alternate words. For instance, male slash female. You are saying either male or female, okay? But it mustn't be opposite, okay? It can be just words of the same status, but you are using it to, to separate them to mean that one is still the same thing as the other one. For instance, you can say full stop slash Punctu uh, punctuation marks it means full stop is a punctuation mark well full stop slash period you are just saying full stop is the same thing as period so this is uh what we have for the media punctuation marks and you have to look at all these examples you discover that they are not used at the end of our writing but at the middle or in between some well, some structures within the same sentence and this is why we call them media punctuation marks that is it for the punctuation marks as one of the mechanics of writing now the next one is spellings this is another area of mechanics of writing which is very important spelling errors when writing no doubt make a kind of a mishmash resulting to uninteresting reading Moreover, misspelled words when writing, especially during lectures and in the course of jotting down some things, students get uh, misled by their own writings when studying the jotted materials and that easily makes them to fail their exams. The exact message will be zigzagging since they do not get the correct spelling. Okay now, I, I introduced you to homophones or homophonous words, words that are pronounced in the same way but have different origins, different spellings and different meanings. We call them homophones or homophonous words. For example, we have words like um, um, no, no, K-N-O-W is no and no is still no it's, they have the same pronunciation it means when i'm talking somebody is jotting down some things i'm saying if they hear me saying no somebody would write no and other another person may write k n o w you see when reading the two have different points together so it's very important we do justice to spellings like another example is um site s-i-g-h-t is site s-i-t-e is site c-i-t-e is site so at the mention of site we have to know which of the sites okay that have the same pronunciations which one is actually being talked of or talked about another example is um die die can be d-i-e and it can be d-y-e so we have to be very, very careful. All these things pose problems and get people or readership misled of the intended writer meaning. And we have to justify all these things as good writers. The last mechanics of writing, or the last of the mechanics of writing rather, is capitalization. This is another important mechanic of writing whose absence can mar the writer intended message. There are some common rules that guide the way we capitalize and they are as follows. One, at the beginning of a sentence, beginning of a sentence, example, the boy is stylish. That T for the starting the sentence must be capitalized. After that, full stop, life is good. You're saying the boy is stylish, full stop, life is good. That L, life, okay? That L must be capitalized. Two, it is used for proper nouns. Anytime you are writing a name of a person, okay, the first or initial letter of the name must be capitalized. Ubaidallah, U has to be capitalized. Kefi, K, Maloney, M, they have to be capitalized. It is used for names of months. Anytime you are writing months or days or festivals or historical eras, the initials must be capitalized. Friday, the F has to be 
J for January, okay? New Year Festival, the N for New, the Y for the Year, and for F for Festival. They have to be capitalized, okay? It is also used for titles or names of things, titles of people. The governor of Zamfara, that governor, the G has to be capitalized. Emir of Kefi, the E for Emir, and the rest. It is also used when writing titles of books the initials of content words for titles of books must be capitalized for instance season of propaganda season s has to be capitalized because it's a content word propaganda the p has to be capitalized but of is just a function word you don't capitalize anything these are also very important it is also used for adjectives from proper nouns Okay, adjectives from proper nouns like Muslim from uh, Muslim is actually an adjective. Okay, for a, a somebody whose belief lies on Islam, that M has to be capitalized. Christian, somebody whose belief lies on Christianity, that C anytime for these adjectives, they have to be capitalized at their initial positions. Lastly, they are used for nations and adjectives indicate, indicating nationality. For instance, Nigeria, N, anytime, it has to be capitalized. Nigerian, which is got from Nigeria to mean an adjective for someone, okay, who is uh, a Niger uh, somebody who belongs to Nigeria, okay, that N for Nigerian has to be capitalized. When you're using it as an adjective too, you have to capitalize the N. Ghana and Ghanaian. The G for Ghana has to be capitalized. Ghanaian, the G for Ghanaian has to be capitalized. These are the mechanics of writing I've introduced you to and I've explained with examples. Thank you for listening and I wish you best of luck.